Charles Stratton, also known as General Tom Thumb, was born on January 4th, 1838 in Bridgeport, Connecticut, to the parents of similar stature to him. Charles was born at normal height, but he stopped growing at the age of six months old. He was 25 inches tall and weighed 15 pounds. He grew to be 40 inches tall and 70 pounds once he got older. He rose to prominence as an American entertainer, known for his short stature. P.T. Barnum discovered Charles and persuaded his parents to let him come work for him at $3 a week. Barnum put Charles into his American Museum in New York City when he was four years old. This was Charles' first taste of the entertainment industry. He was a wealthy young man when he returned back to America. Barnum transformed Charles into a performer by naming him General Tom Thumb and claiming that he was 11 years old. On December 8, 1842, General Tom Thumb gave his first performance, and 30,000 people came to see him in that first week. He rose to prominence quickly. For a long time, the general toured with Barnum and eventually became a big draw at the American Museum. Thumb went on his own tour for a while, but when the money ran out, he came back to P.T. Barnum. Mercy Lavinia Warren Bump was born in Middleborough, Massachusetts, and despite being only 32 inches tall, she made a huge impact on the world. She was born into a family of seven children, the youngest of whom was her younger sister, Minnie. Lavinia was well-educated and descended from William the Conqueror and the five pilgrims who arrived in America on the Mayflower. She began her career as a teacher, but she soon became a member of a relative's floating palace of curiosities on the Ohio and Mississippi rivers. P.T. Barnum, the famous American showman, first heard about her there. He invited her and her parents to his Bridgeport, Connecticut home. He was so impressed with her demeanor and intelligence that he hired her to work at the American Museum in New York City as well. Lavinia's first public appearance caused quite a stir, and she quickly became one of Barnum's most well-known acts. She lived in a beautiful home in New York and was treated like a queen. She was on display with Commodore Nutt, a small performer who liked her a lot. Lavinia was nice to him, but she didn't share the same feelings, really only saw him as a, a nice little boy. Barnum paid Lavinia well to perform at his museum and she quickly became one of the most popular attractions, bringing in $3,000 a day. Tom Thumb and Lavinia met while working for P.T. Barnum in 1862. As they became more acquainted, their friendship blossomed into love. They married on February 7, 1863, at Grace Episcopal Church in New York City. There were 2,000 guests in attendance, including many celebrities. The wedding was discussed as if it were a fairy tale romance. The newlyweds took a world tour, visiting the Lincolns in Washington, D.C., and Queen Victoria in London. They went on tour together after that and became a popular attraction in their own right, solidifying their reputation as a cute and unique couple. They made a lot of money traveling around the world and performing for both royalty and ordinary people. They lived very comfortably and they bought an extremely large house in Bridgeport, Connecticut, a mansion, some would say. The mansion symbolized their quick rise to fame and wealth, as well as their success. They lived there for a very long time, hosted many parties and events. Their home demonstrated how hard they worked, how much they cared about their jobs, and how much they cared about each other. People were fascinated by Tom Thumb and Lavinia Warren's love story, and theirs was widely praised as a true love story. They had a full and exciting life together, inspiring others with their love and the growth of their strength. The stresses of show business harmed Tom Thumb's health, though. He passed away of a stroke July 15, 1883, at the age of 45. Over 10,000 people attending his funeral and burial in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Lavinia was devastated. She never forgot her love. But when her husband passed away and the years passed by, she decided it was time to move on. She remarried April 6th, 1885 to Count Primo Magari, an Italian immigrant who had come to America to make money. These are Interesting Things with J.C.